Hey, thanks for joining us for another week in this series called Redefined. Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount is really doing some incredible things, things that shook up society, it shook up the culture that he was speaking to, particularly the religious community. And my encouragement as you go through this section of the Sermon on the Mount is to really take a deeper look. It can sometimes be part of the passage that we think we know what it means or we think we understand what Jesus is trying to say, and perhaps it's different than we thought. The reality is Jesus came from this section last week in talking about the law and understanding how he came to fulfill it and not to abolish it. I think he's setting up what he's about to say next. He goes into talking about six different things that each one of them could probably be its own sermon, and each one to the people at the time was very, uh, it, it shook up the culture. It was something different than what they'd heard before. Jesus' whole section here is the, you've heard it said, and then he follows it up, but I tell you. And the temptation is to perhaps think that Jesus is speaking to, again, abolish the law or to put something down. But in so many cases, as we examined this in this last sermon, Jesus really was not trying to take anything away from the law. He was bringing in something to make it a deeper work in us. And that's what we talked about this week. It was taking something that could perhaps be just an external thing and turning it into something that was very internal, into the individual heart of the believer. And so the question that I want to pose to you as you heard the sermon and you've been able to understand that this week is the question is, what if we saw our spiritual growth as something bigger than just for ourselves? Meaning, yes, I want God to work in my life, but what's the reason I really want him to do that? Sure, I mean, I want to be saved as much as the next person. I, I want to spend eternity in heaven. But it feels like Jesus is suggesting a much more relational type of lifestyle and something much more on purpose and on mission than just for our own sake or for our own good. And so I wanted to share a little bit with you about the things we talked about. Jesus does a saving work to do a deeper work to accomplish a greater work. In other words, as we talk, Jesus saved us but so that he could do a deeper work in us, pruning us of the things that aren't like himself. And then in order to do that, he needs to get into our life, into our stuff and into our hearts. But he does this not just for our own good, but for the good of those we might impact in our world to fulfill the Great Commission to go to all the world and share with people about Christ, making them into disciples, baptizing them, and teaching them to obey the words that Jesus said. If we look at our spiritual growth as not just something that can impact us, but something that's created and designed to impact our world, we start to see a much bigger purpose for the work that God wants to do in our hearts. See, it's not just to clean me up, it's not just to transform me and to make myself into the image of his son, but it's actually also to impact the world around me. And so I wanted to share with you again the verse that we shared in our sermon from 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is the New International Version. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. This deeper kind of work, if we allow God to do it, can bring revival into our schools, our churches, our workplaces, our communities. The work that is done individually is, yes, to stir up the individual, but it's also to make an impact in the world around them. And so the steps that we can follow from that passage in 2 Chronicles is first a humble heart. It's a humility of spirit. It, it's, it's allowing God to get into our stuff, to, to break us down so that he can become greater. The words of John the Baptist ring out here, I must become less, he must become more. It, it goes to persistent prayer, to be able to move into a place where we're making prayer a regular part of our life and our group's life. A holy hunger, a holy desperation, my friend Charles calls it. It's an opportunity for us to seek God in everything and at all times. And finally, a radical form of repentance where we're confessing our sin, where we're clearing out the things from our life that would hinder our relationship with God. Revival can come to our hearts and to our communities in the work that Jesus is doing, the deeper work that he wants to do to accomplish a much greater vision and work in our community. So ask yourself and perhaps in your small group as you study that this week, what if we saw our spiritual growth with a bigger purpose than just for ourselves? God bless you. Have a great week.